What's up, everyone? It's Adi. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use the GameCube Auto Splitter for Resident Evil 4 that me and Jed have been uh, getting collected and ready for you guys to use. Um, we're using the Auto Split tool by Toful and all the other developers that work on that. So, shout outs to these guys because they've been working on it for a couple years now and it's actually really good. Um, there was one before this one that I used to use and I actually like sent it over to Toful so he could like look at it and get some. Uh, you know, comparisons on how it worked, and, I, th you know, they've gotten theirs to where it's the best one on the market, quote-unquote, these days, so be sure to check this page out on the GitHub and their Discord. You can um, ask questions and things if you need it in the future, but anyways, um, I'm going to show you how to use it specifically for RE4 on GameCube. Um, so right now, I've got the game running, and... In the past few days, I've figured out like the the actual um, aspect ratio that Resident Evil 4 needs to be in order for it to look correct. So when you play this game on a CRT, um, you still have the black bars on the top and bottom, but it's not you know four by three per se. Um, in terms of what the actual game is showing you. So if it were to like to be stretched fully up and down where the black bars weren't there and it was just full game, then obviously this whole thing would be, you know, four by three. Um, but just this part right here, I found out that it's actually seven by six. <laughs> so I've got some things here. I'll just run over this really quick. So when you get when you get a source from your capture card, um, it's probably going to be in 720 by 480 um, coming in from the Wii. As you can see here, it says 20, 720 by 480. But when you play on a old CRT, it's going to then format it into that 4x3 screen. So there's a little bit of... Um, cropping and adjustments that the TV does. So we've got to account for this in order for it to look correct to us when we're using it um, in these new days, streaming platforms and everything 16 by nine and et cetera, et cetera. So here's, here's basically the notes I wrote for myself whenever I was making this. Um, if you crop just the sides of the image, so if I come in here and I look at my filters, if I look at crop, so it's going to be wonky. Okay, there we go. So I've just cropped the left and right. And right now um, I've got some weird numbers in here. But normally if you have just a 720 by 480, uh, picture what you're going to want to do is the first thing you do is you're going to want to change it to 4 by 3 by using a scaling option in the filters so my capture card currently is already upscaling into a 4 by 3 format because it's able to do that um, most of the time you're not going to be able to do this. Like with, if you have say like an Elgato, for example, um, you're probably going to have a 720 by 480 image. And then you can see that's what it normally looks like. Make this a little bigger for you guys. So that's, that's like a 720 by 480. This is probably what you're going to see when you have a capture card. So the first thing you're going to want to do is act like, all right, Let's smush it into a 4x3 as if a CRT would. So now, now that's the correct aspect ratio at least. And then obviously you've got to get rid of the sides, the crop of the sides. So you don't want to do the whole thing where it's you know, getting rid of the black on top and bottom because you need that because the CRT would normally show that. So you want to just get rid of the side like that. And it should be 40 and 40, or something that equivalates to 80 horizontally. So 40 on the left and 40 on the right would equal 80 total horizontal. Um, 
for example, Judd, his Elgato, he has like the left side at like 37, but then the right side is 43. So either way, it equals out to 80. Therefore, it's the perfect scaling of what you would normally see in a CRT. And I have that written down as um, the TV is adjusting it to 4x3. So it's looking at 640 by 480 instead of 720 by 480. So if you take 640 horizontal pixels and you minus 80 pixels, that's, you know, 40 left and 40 right for the black bars, then we're actually getting a 560 pixel width. So therefore, the, the aspect ratio is actually 560 by 480 for the game on GameCube. Um, so in OBS, you'll need to use a scaling aspect ratio filter to set it to 4 by 3 before you crop the image. And then when you see it, that should be the correct aspect ratio for GameCube, which is 7 by 6. That's what 560 by 480 is, 7 by 6 aspect ratio. To upscale that, here's one times, that's what it normally is. And then here's all the differences, uh, different scaling options you would have inside of OBS. So you would want to use one of these higher resolutions for like, you know, if you want it to look a little better on streaming. So for example, I'm using two times. So I'm doing 1120 by 960 whenever I'm recording just the game footage, like I'm doing like a segmented or, you know, I'm just needing to get the pictures for this auto splitter, which we're going to talk about here in a second. That's the, the resolution I'm going to use inside of OBS's canvas. So 1120 by 960. It's a seven by six aspect ratio, 29.97. That's the frame rate of the game. So that is like exactly how it should be. So if your capture card can't use any of the upscaling methods, like I showed with mine, for example, um, I know that I want it to be in a, you know, four by three format. Uh, which would be 640 by 480, but that's lower than 720 by 480. I want to go up. So I have a 1280 by 960, which is two times 640 by 480. So two times a four by three scale. So I just make my capture card go ahead and use that to make it higher quality image as it's coming in, hopefully. It's obviously not truly that, but you know, at least gives it double the amount of pixels. And then when I crop it, I'm accounting for that. And instead of it being 40 and 40 for me, it's 70 and like 72. It's a little different. It's weird because it's a different as or different uh, upscaled resolution. So it's a little bit different in terms of the numbers. Anyways, same result though. Same same type of deal. If I take that the scaling aspect off, it doesn't matter because it's already a four by three source. So hopefully that makes sense to what, I, what I'm saying here. So. Um, but yeah, if you're, this part I think was incorrect. Whoops. Right there. I think that's incorrect. That was when I was messing with something else, but anyways. Um, and then yeah, scaling with windows could be messing up stuff if, if, and when you're trying to take some of these pictures, but I don't think that's going to be a thing. Um, I'll show you in a second. So anywho, now that we've gotten like what we want to base our game off of, you can make any kind of like, you know, um, layouts and put the game into the window however you want it on this later. Like, you know, you, oh, I want splits over here and the game's over here and I want to move it to where it's, you know, knock out the black bars and et cetera, et cetera. You can do all that inside of the window. You just want the source coming in to be correct. And then we can worry about it like the auto split pictures working correctly that way. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to actually uh, use the auto splitter and also how to take your own pictures in case the ones we've given you don't work. We've actually taken two sets of pictures. We have one from my capture card, which is the Micom soft, 512 uh, whatever it's called uh, I'll, I'll see if I can find the, the full name of it really quick for you it's a very weird name yeah it's the Microsoft. <laughs> I'll just show you like an eBay link of it 
SC512 and one dash L DVI. Yeah, it's it's this thing. We just call it the Deep Japan Capture Card because it's from a, it was like a super Japanese website that we got it off on the Microsoft site back in the day. But anyways, that's what I have. It's a really good one. It does anything from NES up to today's standards. So from like 240p up to you know 1080 or more. Maybe maybe you can go to like 1440. I can't even remember. Anyhow, I took all of my pictures with that, and so that's gonna be the the base ones that I give everyone. But if those don't work, like for Judd, they weren't working because he's an Elgato, and his can't his resolution and stuff with the Elgato is not nearly as high, and the saturation was a little bit different. And uh, so he just took his own pictures using an Elgato, and so it's the same pictures, um, just with a different capture card. So. You can switch between the two and see if one works better or not for you, but they are the same pictures at the same spots and everything. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up Live Split, and I already have the Auto Split component inside of it, which I'll show you. It pulls it up by itself, but it is a separate EXE. Um, however, if you put the component in it that I have uh, put in the folder in the description, you can then go into your layout and it has an auto split integration that you can add inside of control. Yeah. Auto split integration. And you tell it where the EXE is, uh, where your settings file is, which I also gave you, but you can make your own. And then it knows to pull up the auto split EXE by itself. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the auto split file you've also got this in there along with the sign ADA because both of those work um, and what you're going to do each time that you're going to try to play is you pull up OBS and this is the part where the formatting of this this image from your capture card is very important and that's why I, that's why I went over that first so say you have your layout and it's like you know something different like you've got it in Oh, uh, let's go change this back to uh, 1920 by 1080. Like, I'm actually going to do a stream rather than just just capturing the game itself, right? So it's like, all right, you know, I've got all this other weird stuff, right? Like, okay, cool. So I formatted the game, got comments and other crap on here. But the source coming in hasn't changed. I haven't manipulated that at all. And that's the important part. So what you have to do is right-click on your actual capture card source and do a windowed projector source. And this is going to bring out a little window. So at this point, you can disable your preview. You can minimize this OBS. You can do whatever you want. But you need to keep this window up and active. Uh, what we like to do is right-click, fit window to content. That way, it crops it exactly how it should be. So this is what you should be seeing. You should be seeing the exact same thing that I showed you in terms of how to format the image. So now that that's there, in here we've got, you've already got the settings for me and you can just load that profile and it should have everything you need. But we're gonna look at some things. So comparison is 60, that's just the default. Live capture region means it's gonna show whatever your source is right here. And I'll show you that in a second. The capture method we like to use, there's two ones, there's two different ones you can choose. So you can do this one, which is uh, what Judd uses, and it, it works just fine. I've been using the full first full content rendering, um, but either one works. I'll just go with this one for now, just for fun. Um, make sure it's on histograms because that's been the one that's worked the best. Uh, L2 normal or norm is the one that it defaults to. P hash is just like not recommended at all is what it says if you uh, hover over this. Um, but histogram has been the one that works the best. Um, default similarity and all that, like you don't really need to worry about this because we have all of our images set to specific numbers. But this is basically saying if it hits 90% of the, the similarity of the image, that's when you would want to split. And then between each split, wait 10 seconds. Um, yeah. Anywho. So you want to set up your hotkeys to be the exact same as your live split hotkeys, global hotkeys, so that it splits, you know, knows when to uh, all, do all that stuff that live split does. Unfortunately, right now they don't have a pause um, feature. 
in ter- like in terms of setting an image that it would just pause on. Uh, I've talked to them about it, and they said that's in like the pipeline. Like they want to work on that, and so when that happens, we will update this and add that pause image in there, and uh, should be able to like you know pause the timer anytime that we hit a pause screen, which will be nice. But for now, you'll just have to manually pause. That's the only thing you're going to have to do, basically, is manually pause and manually reset just so it resets on, you know, what you want it to. With the time of Ada, you could actually make, like, a pretty decent reset screen. But with main game, just reset it like normal. Um, anywho, so we have our window. Select the window. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn the live capture on so that you can see that it is recording it. It looks a little weird. It's not going to look the same because the, um, the image gets like transformed into whatever these are by default. And so we're not going to touch that. Um, then you come in and browse and you say, all right, I want you to look at whatever pictures we're doing. Like say we're doing assignment ADA. So we're going to look at these pictures. Like, all right, we're doing the main game. So we're going to look at these pictures. Like, cool. So, you can hit reload start image if it's not showing the image here. And it's saying, all right, here's my live image. Here's the image I'm looking for to start. And then once it hits this threshold down here, the threshold we have set right now is 94%. It's got to equal 94% or higher of similarity between the two before this will split or start. In this case, this is the starting image. So what's going to happen is... I'm going to go ahead and go to the load screen and it might split or it might start here in a second. Yeah. So it already started because it's just so similar on that part, <laughs> but normally, so I'm just going to reset it. So normally you can see, okay, we're at 91%. Like it's the highest it's seen in terms of the threshold right now. It's currently at between 90 and 91. So if I go to my game and I'm about to load it, you can see now it's up to 95, 96, which is above the threshold. And with this particular image, we have it set to where once that threshold goes down below it, then it will start. Every other image, besides a few, we have set to as soon as it sees the image, it will split. But this one says, I'm going to wait until the image is gone and then split. So I'm going to hit yes, and you're going to see it started um, now that the threshold's been met. And it's basically going to wait for the amount of time that we have set on each picture and then start looking for whatever the next screenshot is in, in the, uh, the pipeline. So it's like, all right, the next one it's looking for is the end of chapter screen for a one, one, then it's going to look for this emblem. Then it's going to look for chapter one, two, and then it's going to look for this merchant screen. It's going to look for the boulder. It's going to look for chapter one, three, et cetera, et cetera. We have all the, all the splits in the folder for you. So you have the, the template, so that's going to work. Um, I'll show you some of these images here and what they, how, uh, how these are formatted, just so you'll know, in case you have to make your own pictures, you can de- basically just copy paste the names. But the thing that's going to be the biggest thing for people in case these aren't splitting is changing the part that has the parentheses zero point, whatever that is the, percentage the threshold that it needs to meet in order for the image to split so if for some reason you see that there's an image and it keeps splitting in random places a lot of the time then that means you need to up the threshold because the threshold's too low and it's hitting that threshold too often therefore it's splitting all the time otherwise if it's the other way around and it never splits that means you need to lower the threshold that says like the the image is never looking the same according to the auto split exe therefore you've got to change it to where it's a lower threshold. Um, the weights should all be fine. Like we have like 45 seconds, wait, wait 45 seconds, uh, after the end of chapter one, one to look for the next item, wait 60 seconds before looking for this screen, et cetera, et cetera. That gives us, uh, where it's not looking for images all the time, but it knows exactly like, all right, we're getting close to this image. We should start looking. Um, and the best way to take your own pictures is going to be with um, the OBS settings I showed earlier. So get your get your capture board all set up however it needs to be. Come in here, change that to, and I have this handy dandy, 1120 by 960. I'm going to make that the same. Don't want to 
change the the scale, make it so that it looks like this. Do a completely um, full run, just record the entire run, and then later you can come in, and I'll show you an example. Um, OBS recordings will say like I looked at uh, like this right here. This was me doing like a uh, an assignment ADA. And so, you know, whenever I know that there's a plug coming up, I would just come in and then do frame by frame until I found the image that I needed. And then you take a picture of it in VLC and then you can use that as, so it's like, all right, plug a sample. I want this as my image. I would click this picture button. It would take a snapshot. And then if I go to my pictures, you can use this, come in, look at the names we have set here, copy paste it. That way it's using your capture cards image. Therefore it should be as similar as possible when it's looking at the thresholds. Uh, for example, our friend Lewis has a crappier capture card that's only using composite and it's interlaced. Don't know if these images are gonna work for him. He might have to make his own images. The thresholds might be whack. He might have to do the whole thing on his own, but I'm just showing you how that's gonna work. So, like I've said, in the folder, I've given you guys um, all the things you're going to need. And I'll show you exactly what each of those are, just to make sure that we're all on the same page here. So, we go to Auto Splitters GameCube. So, we've got the Auto Split EXE program. This is the integration DLL that you want to put in your live split component folder so that whenever you go to your edit layout, you have the auto split integration. That way it just starts. You can make your own layout for specifically GameCube runs. You can do this with USB or disc. It'll work the same way. Um, and if you want to do this for like a, you know, a PlayStation and an Xbox, a switch or whatever else, all you got to do is make your own pictures. Um, it'll be different, obviously, since it's not going to have this weird format. It will be 16 by 9. You'll have to make your own pictures. This is strictly for GameCube. Second, we've got the assignment ADA auto splitter pictures from the Elgato itself, uh, from the my Micomsoft 512 OEP Auto capture card. Then we have the same thing for Elgato of the main game and then the other pictures of the main game. We have the uh, AA uh, live split template for splits, the main game, main, new game plus, can't talk, new game plus auto split template, and then we have the settings, which is the thing um, that this is looking for. So you can just like file, load profile, load that, and it should have all the things I have set, but you can always play around with that. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Um, I'll try to answer them as I go. Um, you can also ask any of the, like pro probably Lewis on the, uh, SR com board or discord, if you guys are in there, cause he's, uh, he's in groups with me and I'll be helping him to get this set up here in a little bit, probably. So, um, yeah, but it works great. Uh, me and Joe have done a few runs on both assignment ADA and new game plus, and it's worked fantastic. We don't have to worry about anything. Um, I would recommend turning this live capture off, by the way, just like just to get as many things out of the pipeline as possible. But keep this window up and make sure global hotkeys are on. You're pretty much good to go. So enjoy the GameCube runs, everybody. Enjoy RE4 month, and we will holler at you next time.